Five years ago, when I couldn't get a job after graduating college, I decided to learn coding. Two years after writing my first Hello World program, I got into Amazon and last year, I joined Google as a software engineer. Even though I made a good progress in last five years and I'm grateful to be where I am today, there's a part of me that still wonders if I could have done better. You see, I spent countless hours watching YouTube videos trying to figure out the best method to learn programming in a way that not only gets me a job, but also sets me up for a great career as a software engineer. I could not find a single comprehensive video that explained how to learn coding from scratch step by step. So I had to try out many different things that people were recommending on YouTube. As a result, I started learning Python, Java, JavaScript, React, Redux all at once. After learning all this, when I looked behind to check where I had reached, I was in the exact same spot where I started. I was jobless. It took me many many months to climb out of that darkness. If only there was a video which gave me all the steps I need to take to learn programming in a practical way, I would not only be in the exact same place as today in much less time, I might have also become a better programmer. What you are watching right now is the video I wish I had when I started learning programming. Before I get into the 4 step process and give you all the free resources I would use to learn programming. Let's discuss what I would pick for my programming language. I want to talk about three popular options here. First and one of the most popular options is JavaScript. Though JavaScript is used in the backend with the help of Node, most of its demand still comes from the frontend. So I'm going to assume that if I were to pick up JavaScript as my first language, I want to do frontend development. If you don't already know, HTML, CSS and JavaScript are the basic building blocks of frontend development. But these three are not enough to become an employable software engineer. You need to learn some more libraries or frameworks on top of these to be on par with the industry. Some example frameworks for CSS that I learned are Bootstrap and Tailwind, but there are many other options. For JavaScript, you'll need to learn React, Angular or Vue to land a job. There are some other advanced technologies like Redux and Next.js that might be needed in some cases. As you might have already guessed, this path is long and hard for beginners. That's why I would not pick JavaScript if I was just starting out. Next popular option is learning Python which most people recommend. Python has many applications in backend, automation and data science. Why most people recommend Python is because it's one of the easiest languages to learn. Syntax of Python is very simple and easy to pick. Python will also give you an advantage in coding interviews because it requires less lines of code for the same amount of code. Due to all these advantages, I had recommended Python in my video on fastest way to learn coding and get a job. But this video is not about taking shortcuts. What we need to understand is that all this ease of learning comes at the cost of performance. I don't want to get into too many details here, but Python is slower than other programming languages like Java or C++. That's because it's dynamically typed and it's an interpreted language. If you don't know what that means, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Just know that Python is slower. Another issue with Python is that it has limited support for concurrency. For these reasons, Python is rarely used to build complex backend systems. If I look at my own work experience, most of Amazon's backend is in Java most of Google's is in C++. And I have so many friends who work on the backends of companies like Microsoft, Uber and Facebook and they don't use Python in their services at all. Since my goal from the day one was to become a good software engineer along with getting a job, I would actually pick the third option which is Java. Along with the performance benefits that I just mentioned, Java has some other advantages for the beginners. Java is a mature language and there are a ton of resources to learn Java. Because it's a compiled language, errors in Java can be caught at the compile time and are very descriptive. Since Java has been around for so long, you can find solutions to most errors on the stack overflow which makes it very easy to debug. And did I already mention the amazing documentation Oracle provides for Java? We'll see how to use this documentation in a moment when I cover how I would learn Java. But I've still not told you the best part about learning Java. And that is, once you have learned Java, you can pick up any other language very easily. For me, I started with learning Java. When I felt I needed Python to speed up my interview performance, I picked it up in a couple of weeks. When I wanted to learn web development using JavaScript based React, that didn't take me a long time either. And as I switched jobs, I had to program in C++, Golang and some other languages and I never had any problems. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about step 1, which is learn Java. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I'm a strong believer in learning by doing. So instead of falling asleep while watching a long Java tutorial, I would actually get to work and start coding. Let me show you some resources that I would use. The best free resource to learn Java interactively is this aptly named course called Learn Java on Code Academy. On top of covering basic concepts like variables, if else statements and loops. This course also teaches you slightly advanced concepts like object-oriented programming, encapsulation, and inheritance. I would pay special attention to these advanced concepts because these are the fundamentals of software development. Each chapter comes with a free lesson portion and a paid quiz and project. I would focus on the free lesson part for now. Each lesson introduces you to a new concept and guides you through an exercise at the end. It also provides you a way to write and run all the code within the browser if you are stuck. 
You can also get a hint. Here are two things I would not do while using Code Academy. Number one, I would not copy paste the code. When you write the code yourself, you get used to the syntax. Number two, I would not use the hint before trying to solve the problem myself. Another advantage of learning programming this way is that if I make a mistake, I'll have to debug the error myself. I can always google the error and look for the solution on websites like Stack Overflow. I can also try to debug the error using Java documentation. For example, in this error, I can see that the print line function does not exist. So I can go to the documentation and figure out what functions are actually available to me. Now if I could spend some money, I would do this course called Learn Java from Scratch on Educator. This course is very comprehensive and also gives you challenges and quizzes at the end of every chapter. Now that I've learned Java, I will move on to the next step which is step number two, build guided projects. In this step, I will follow along with instructors as they build some cool projects in Java. There are many options that I can choose from, but here are a few examples. For my first project, I would follow this tutorial from FreeCodeCamp where the instructor built Sudoku from scratch. There are many things that I won't understand in this tutorial at first, but I would Google everything and use Java documentation to understand as much as I can. Once I'm done with the first project, I would move on to a slightly advanced project. For my second project, I would build a snake game that I used to play on my dad's Nokia 3315 back in the day. For that, I would follow this fun tutorial from Bro Code. Even though Bro explains everything really well, but if I still don't understand something, I know that Java documentation is my friend. After following these tutorials, let's move on to the step number three, which is build your own projects. To do that, I would start with a small idea and keep expanding on it to build a bigger and better project. Let me give you an example to show you what I mean by that. In the first two steps, I have already learned the basics of Java, but the elusive concepts like polymorphism and inheritance are very easy to forget. So I would build a program that helps me remember the concepts that I've already learned. This program gives me a random question to answer from a pre-stored list of questions. To make it more interesting, I can make these questions multiple choice and give the program ability to tell if I chose the right option. I can also make this program a question every day to my inbox to keep me on track with my learning. If I'm looking for some more adventure, I can move this program to a server rather than using my own computer. I will call this program from my computer and it will send back the question and the answer options to me. By the way, this program would now be called an API. Instead of storing these questions in an array or something similar, I would store them in a database on the server. If I want to take it to the next level, I can use the Java that I've already learned to make an Android app that calls my API shows the question and lets me select my answer on the app. There's no end to it. I hope you got the point. After building my own projects, I would move on to the step four, which is learning data structures and algorithms. When I was learning Java and building projects, I would have come across many data structures like array, array lists, and maps, etc. As a software engineer, it's very important to know when exactly to use these data structures. You also need to know some algorithms that can help you do certain tasks efficiently. For example, if you wanted to find the shortest path between point A and point B on the map, like Google Maps does, how would you do it? To learn data structures and algorithms, I would go to Coursera and look up this course called Algorithms by Princeton University. This course is taught in Java and comes in two parts. First part covers data structures like stacks, queues, and algorithms like merge sort and union find. Second part covers advanced concepts like graphs, tries, shortest path, etc. I would implement some of these data structures and algorithms by myself to further solidify my knowledge and improve my Java skills. This course also forms the basis of most of the tech interviews that I'll have to go through to get a job. So I would pay special attention to this course. I would also use resources like Geeks for Geeks and Lead Code to improve my interviewing skills. If you think that this entire path is too long, and you're looking for a shortcut to learn programming and get a job, you can watch this video at the top. I'll see you in the next one.